The peoples of the rice coast weren't Africa's only rice growers at the time of the slave trade, because rice had been introduced into what is now southern Ghana, Dahomey, modern-day Benin, coastal Nigeria, and parts of Congo, Angola, some of the other Africans had some experience with the crop. It was not only a subsistence crop, but was produced with the express intent to be used to provision slave ships headed to the New World. Across the Americas, the Africans from these regions in Upper Guinea were brought, to some degree, for the purpose of growing rice. In some areas, it helped vary the diet or replace yams or millet. In others, it was a side crop not worth much attention. In southeastern Nigeria, rice acquired the name the white man's beans. Rice has since caught on quite well in West and Central Africa. Every culture seems to have their answer to rice and beans, a cheap and filling meal. In Ghana, this particular combination is called wache. In Senegal, it is a particularly ancient dish, likely as old as Mali in Songhai, chebunyebe, or rice and black-eyed peas. Rice and chicken, rice and lamb or beef, rice and fish and vegetables, rice with peanut stew, and rice with okra or leafy greens are all seasonal Senegambian specialties, an entire cuisine based around rice. The movement of Africans across borders in the colonial era has spread a Senegalese dish called jolif rice, made with tomatoes and onions, drawing its name from the Wolof Empire, but worthy of arguments as to which version, Senegalese, Sierra Leonean, Ghanaian, or Nigerian, is actually the best. Jolif rice has become the transnational dish of West Africa and has accompanied the modern diaspora of West African immigrants across the globe. It has become for them the go-to heritage food that reminds them of home. In West Africa, rice becomes fritters and mashed balls to be eaten with stew. It becomes porridge, part of soup, and a dessert when prepared mashed with honey. Rice is a mother who has bonded wide swaths of West Africa in ways millet and sorghum have not. In Mende land, the husking and cooking of rice was a daily event to Mame Wove and her compound. Working with her sister, she would pour the rice into a foot and a half deep mortar made from the wood of the Iroko, or African teak tree, and working in concert, they would take the six foot long pestles made of ebony, or the wild rubber tree, and beat the rice in turn and tandem with a solid work rhythm as they sang and clapped between leaps of the pestles. They would then fan the rice in large winnowing baskets to take away the chaff. The usual soup consisted of water, red palm oil, smoked or fresh fish, pepper and onion, and on special occasion meat and poultry. Sweet potato, cassava, or okra leaves varied the sauce, and on other occasions the rice might be eaten with a similar mixture of ingredients with tomatoes, eggplant, and other garden vegetables. Much like the Chinese division between sai fan, meat and vegetables, or fish and the rice that is the main attraction, the Mende likewise call the other food undahang, the thing that goes with mbe, rice. In her garden she grew sweet potatoes, yams, hot peppers, ginger, cassava, okra, peanuts, corn, sugarcane, beans, onions, and herbs. From the trees surrounding her village, she had a rich variety of wild and introduced fruits, including the undoku wuli, diasporous species, hog plums, berries, oranges, coconuts, papayas, guavas, bananas, and plantains, the latter eaten as a starch, leafy greens, and mushrooms. From the rivers and swamps, Women caught catfish, crabs, tilapia, and other fish. Men cutting grass would catch rats, porcupines, bushbucks, dweakers, primates, and snakes. The chickens, ducks, guinea fowl, and goats that rummaged around their village would become stews during a feast, or would be salted, rubbed with hot peppers, and roasted to celebrate a wedding or the rice harvest. <laughs> 